How are we all doing everyone? I hope you are keeping well out there. So a quick one tonight, or at least I hope it's going to be a quick one. So, as you know, I like my cheap short, short wave communications pocket radio doofers. Right, and we have the two famous cheap ones here in use regularly. That's the PL330 from Texan. And the XH Data D808. Two very good receivers for the money. They've gone up a little bit since I got them. I bought them both when they first sort of came out. I think I paid around, this was about 50 euro at the time. I think this is around 60. Now you'd be looking at around 70 and maybe around 80 for this one. So inflation. However, I've noticed a problem with this one lately. And that is terrible syllables. Syllabants. 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 Let's see if we can make. Uh, Get a station in here, you can hear that. Hear that? Ha! Absolutely cap. But if I, if I squeeze down on it there, it kind of stops. So, I don't know if the speakers come loose or what, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to open it up, uh, have a look inside, and see what the crack is with the speaker. But it definitely shouldn't sound like that. So, I'll bring the camera in and we'll have a good look at it. Uh, okay, do. And see what the crack is because she should sound a lot better than that. Hey, a lot better. I'm gonna try and get this set up in a half decent angle. So, anyone that's not familiar with these, these came out around I think maybe three years ago now and made in China. Very cheap XH data. Um, I don't know what other radios they make. Well, they make the, the Shui Don R108, which is a smaller version of this that doesn't have a single sideband or airband capabilities. As you can see, it takes a rechargeable 18650 uh, battery. This is a, a sort of an upgrade of battery I put in. This is, a, I think it's an LG battery. Um, the one that came with it was, uh, I think, 2000. Uh, milliamp, two amp hour, I should say. This crack a thousand milliamps, uh, and this is a 3350 milliamp, so lasts a bit longer. It's a better battery. So, I did have this open once before, but it's that long ago now. I kind of forget what's in here. And battery life seems to be pretty good. I, I haven't had it actually go flat on me yet, as such sort of charge it every now and again when it goes down to one bar and I seem to you know it'll probably last for maybe eight or ten hours on a single charge um plenty of screws holding it together too build quality you know it's not exceptional it's it's not a high-end texan or it's not a high-end um you don't know satellite eating or whatever you call them although i believe they're having problems now i believe their latest flagship is uh being described as completely unusable um, I think something like this for out and about will probably do anything you need it to do really um, let's see she just pops apart a part I think no I'm wrong because I have to take off this knob first <laughs> I knew there was a trick somewhere uh, then it comes a part so what's the crack is the speaker loose or what's going on here um, now I suppose what we could do is we could uh, power it up again, put the battery back into it, just see how it sounds and mess around with the speakers around and see does it stop. It doesn't look uh, or feel loose though. Could there be a bit of dirt I've got in here and it's rattling around inside? Oh dear. She'll not come on now. Why won't you come on? The battery the right way around, I do. Yeah. As I pull this out slightly, messing. Oh, this isn't good. What's the crack here? Why won't you come on? Ah, here we go. Right, 
So the ribbon, I think the ribbon that takes the battery out was caught around the back. Right, so we'll switch on. Oh no, three seconds now with that bloody beep noise. I hate that beeper. Right. You can turn all this off, but if you take the battery out, with these defaults. Um, right, volume. I don't know why it's doing that. Now, we'll turn that crap off for a second. Um, the problem with this is you're paying for the build quality of a certain type, and the type is not not wonderful. Um, while I say the build quality is fair and it's sturdy enough, little plastic cabinets and whatnot, you know, it's not going to fall apart. At the same time, you know, they just melt the plastic to get the speaker in. So. I'm gonna have to break off or they've melted it. Let's see will the speaker come out because it certainly it sounds like it's coming from the speaker. <coughs> Maybe there's a little bit of dirt in there. Is it glued as well? I wonder. I think it might be glued as well. Being moderately careful that we don't want to uh, overly bend um, the speaker frame itself, otherwise we will get voice coil rubbing, and maybe that's what it's suffering from. Could be voice coil rubbing. Now, if that's the case. Getting hold on, do we see a problem here? Hold on a minute, I see it. I see it. No need to do that at all. I see what the problem is. Look at that. There's a big lump of hot snot glue or something stuck in here between the cone and the frame. Can you see that? How the hell did that get in there? Surely not. That doesn't look right at all. That shouldn't be. Alright, we'll get the speaker out so we can have a closer look. Yeah. That's what it is. We'll undo that ribbon connector and make the radio a little bit more manageable just for the time being. Put that over there. I don't think that should be in there. Surely not. What is that and why is it, why is it wedged in there? It must have come off something. Well, look, this only started recently, and the radio hasn't had a fall or anything, um, to my knowledge. Whatever this is, it's stuck to the speaker. But why would you do that? Maybe it was always there. That doesn't make sense. I'll get the... Um something here I can catch a hold with. I want to take it out without ripping the cone. This lump of crap, whatever it is, appears to be there from you. Why would you put a lump of it? Uh, Turn the cone as I try and get it off. This is a bit of a mess. There's no way that should be there. There we go. Right. Surely someone didn't put that in there. No, they couldn't have. Oop. On the floor. Nah. Although you can see, you see the, the bit of cone paper stuck to it. It does appear that it could have been in there from you. Let's try it now. Ribbon connector back on. Huh? 
It's only in the last couple of days I've noticed terrible syllabants. Syllabants on, on this little radio. And it was just, I couldn't bear it today when I turned it on. I said, no, I'm going to have to do something about that. Well, that's a six shooter to rob every bank you can see. Yeah. Tell the judge you said it was alright. Yeah. Well, I like Bob Dylan sometimes, but I'm not going to pay for him on this video. There he is. There we go, there's the fast one. The other problem is that sometimes the reception just isn't ideal in here. It's still there though, is it? No. I can't believe it's been a year since I was standing here. This is all I ever wanted. I'm so happy. I'll tell you one thing. While this radio has impressed me over the years, I'm not impressed with the quality of the speaker. The frame of the speaker is so light that you can actually see. You can see me flexing it there. Can you see that in the light? I'll just show the light in a certain way. You can see that. That's very poor. God, it's a crap speaker. I'd love to get a better speaker and put it in it. However, I think that... Was the cause of our syllabants. Isn't that a strange one? I'll stick it back together and see how it sounds now. I'm the brilliant Eliza well, it and sounds perfect now. Come. First off, a quickity break. At Holland and Barrett this new year, you can buy one, get one free. Well, at least it sounds as good as it'll ever going to sound. Um, so that's it. I had a good look inside. No, it wasn't stuck under the speaker from new. You can see where there's a bit of a shape. It was stuck to something. Um, but what it was stuck to, I don't know. I don't see any more other hot melt glue like that in the radio. And I was looking everywhere to see where that sort of a shape was. Maybe around a post or something. You can't really see it there. But there's a little kind of a curve at the end of the indentation there. Um, I don't know. How did it get in there? Um, but as I say, there's no more hot melt glue like that. They use a different sort of a wax inside. So I don't know. Right, all I have to do now is stick the screws on this. Working away the finest, so we'll leave it at that. Another one. How did I get in there? Mystery. Anyway, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Good luck for now.